with the 12th and final pick of the first round in the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up before you fuck it up draft. <laughs> Casey is on the clock for team the medium dipper. I added the extra R's. Still a pretty bad name. I'm sure there's probably some sort of relevancy to it. I don't I don't I don't get it. It might be an inside joke somewhere else. Um but anyhow, this is the league champion. He's picking at uh 112. 112. How's I feel like my audio's down. Hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Am I like you, you yeah. guys talk. You're good to go. Yeah. See. How you feeling over there? Well, oh, it just seems seemed like I was down in the ears a little. No. I got yep. you right here. The levels uh we still rolling? Uh, we are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it moving. Good team. Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm going to pick Daryl Henderson here. He has Todd Gurley, and that's a lot of my rationale here. I'll break down the team real quick. Patrick Mahomes is what Crushed it. really helped him get here. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, Todd Gurley was was a pretty big factor. He got James Conner, probably not for as much as he should have paid for him. Zero dollars. At this point... Um, and he had Marlon Mack, which was in and out of his lineup, which was good. Um, and then he has Nuke and Juju, which are, you know, huge. Can't do much better than that. Um, no, not when you throw. You throw. He, he didn't pa- have to pay much for Mahomes because he wasn't Mahomes yet. And he got Connor for free because he was still a backup when, we ma- when this happened. It's a one QB league, so, so Mahomes is real cheap. Right. So you throw, you throw Mahomes and Cheap-ish. Connor. There was still a little bit of buzz by some people who wanted him. Yeah, but, but you know, couple, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't like he not, not like a regular starter. Right. Not like starter money. So you throw Nuke Hopkins and Juju and Gurley on top. You, throw, you, you have that fire going, and you throw a decent, a really good buy on his part with Marlon Mack, and then... I fought him for Marlon Mack for a, a while. A dang crystal ball with Patrick Mahomes and just the lucky horseshoe on top with James Conner with Le'Veon Bell not playing, and there you got a league champ on your hands. Yeah, so uh, Bell was in the holdout because we did do this pretty late. Um, so he might have paid a little bit more than normal for Con- for Conner, but he definitely didn't pay full price. Well, Bell was in his preseason holdout, yeah. which would that's what he did the year before, and he yeah. showed up and played. But still has Mike Williams on the team, and then he's got Evan Ingram down there, which is you know a nice play. I really like it for this season. Um, but I I ended up taking Todd Gurley or uh, yeah Todd Gurley. I ended Darryl up taking Henderson. Daryl Henderson here. I thought a lot about AJ Brown. I did think about AJ Brown when I was taking Paris Campbell. At the end of the day, with AJ Brown, like you have to look at it as this is dynasty, man. Yeah. Like you you can be upset about it. You're gonna get a, end up getting a really good value on a on a big slot player here. Don't love him playing outside, so I'm a little confused on how he's gonna fit in with what's going on in Tennessee for AJ Brown and Adam Humphreys. Uh, yeah, and then you got Adam Humphreys who's playing the slot. If he wasn't there, I'd be much more intrigued. Now, obviously, you drafted AJ Browns, but you're paying it. Adam Humphreys like ten million a right. year or something crazy. Yeah, uh, and I don't know what the clause is. He could be cut after a year or whatever. But I don't love AJ Brown outside. Now they don't really have a tight end to speak of, so maybe AJ Brown can, you know, kind of fill in a little bit of not not saying he's going to line up as a tight end, but could see kind of some of those targetish areas that's i feel like that's kind of how aj brown plays really good player somebody's going to get a hell of a deal um and it's it's dynasty man you got to be patient and wait and you're going to get a hell of a player something will change either Mariota will be out of there or um well humphreys they they, they got they got to keep him this year and then next year it'd be seven and a half million dead cap if they cut him yeah and then there's a pot- potential out in 2021 but still five million dead well cap, they just so. picked him up yeah, they just, just right. you're not talking about him leaving. They well, just I just picked him up. There, sometimes there's, you know, after a year you could cut a guy for cheap and yeah. maybe AJ you want AJ Brown a little bit more in that spot. I don't know exactly how the Titans are going to use it. It's an offense that's up in the air, but this is dynasty and you have to play for down the road here and I think AJ Brown would be a good pick. That being said, this guy had Todd Gurley. I thought I thought uh Henderson was the pick to go. You got to you got to uh secure your asset here. Um and though I don't think that Todd Gurley is going to be like uh a huge issue moving forward. I think he'll be just fine. He's been a great playmaker. I think he scored something crazy like 40 touchdowns in the last two years. Like, just a good player for the team. He doesn't need a ton of volume to be a good fantasy player for your team. Um, and they obviously drafted Daryl Henderson and they brought back Malcolm Brown. So they obviously see some need to take a little bit of load off of Todd Gurley. I think Todd Gurley's going to have a really nice season this year. Just not going to see 
the crazy amount of volume. Again, I don't think he needs it to be a, a really high fantasy producer. He can score. He can catch it out of the backfield. He yeah. can break off long runs. Yeah. This is a spread out offense, which leads me to a Daryl Henderson being a nice fit. Great fit. This is what Daryl Henderson wants to do. This is where he right. came from. They had they had a how he kind of a system so much at Memphis. Right, these wide open lanes. They have a system where you they can spread it out, and there's playmakers everywhere. And McVeigh's a little bit more innovative than most people. I think there will be. You're going to see some Henderson week in week out. I think. I think he's I think, a pretty decent receiver. I think Brown is the girly backup if something happens to Gurley. Henderson's role could pretty much stay the same and slightly increase if something happened to Todd Gurley sure. is the way I see this panning out. Now, obviously, you just saw the blurb over the weekend of saying, well, we got the GM saying, well, this is a guy that we view as like an Alvin Kamara on our team. So everyone immediately already is. We I, we saw him go really high in a rookie draft, I think probably because of that article. Didn't even have Gurley. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think he'll have some standalone value. And I, I don't think... I never thought Daryl Henderson was going to be a guy that got taken and was going to be the go-to workhorse guy. I think this is a great role for him. Um, I again, completely agree with that. This is this is a guy who's electric in space. I don't think he's a great grinder between the tackles, but if you can get him out into open space, I think his best ability is choosing his angles and his lanes to use his top end speed to his advantage and not allowing people to get angles on him. And I think that's what he did best at Memphis. I think that's what's going to be work well for him um, in this Ram system. And, you know, I do think they do have a need of giving Gurley a little less on his plate this year. And H Henderson's going to be part of the equation. I don't know how much you're going to want to be just starting Daryl Henderson, but well, there will be weeks where Henderson, I think, has a decent week. But again, I do think Malcolm Brown is still the direct actual running back backup to Todd Gurley, which is probably more or less why they secured him. They see Henderson as a playmaking piece for them. Well, you guys did Henderson early in your evaluations. He was one of the first shows you put out, so I was able to get that again. I had a baby this year, had less film watching in the last eight years, ten years for me, ever, really. And that was good for me to have that as my base for Henderson moving forward to hear y'all talk about Henderson so early in the process. And then I've been, been trying to play catch-up ever since. And you can't look at Henderson and you can't look at stats for Henderson. You can't watch a game on Henderson or look at a highlight tape on Henderson without seeing explosiveness and what he can do with the ball in his hands. And when he goes to a place like the Rams, like you said, the fit, the, what he came from, what he was used to, it couldn't line up any better. And the fact that the Rams were like, we're going to take this guy in the third round. First of all, maybe a little bit of load reduction for Todd Gurley, but a nice piece of insurance, which was again, Malcolm Brown matching his tender offer too. You know, so I think that was a great play by the Rams, a great football pick by the Rams. And to me, if you were a Henderson guy to begin with, and you, initially you see him go behind Todd Gurley, you have to slap your forehead for sure for week one prowess. But if something were to happen to Gurley, I don't have a problem with you saying M M Malcolm Brown's number one in line for the totes because I think you're probably right, and he's still is still an electric offense. But then if Malcolm, then if Henderson's role would expand a little bit, slash could expand a little bit, slash well, I think just, it definitely would. There's no reason to say no way. Well, it'll right, stay the same. Right. But. Exactly. It's not like well, it's not like hey, well now you know is Henderson got any better? It's just we don't have Gurley to lean on. So let's we got we're gonna. McVeigh it up. The X's and O's going this way. Here comes Henderson going that way. And I so I th it wouldn't hurt my feelings if you wanted to take Henderson a spot or three above this. If you're a diehard running back needy team, like we had a couple picks ago and two pick last pick when I need when I took Mikole Hardman, I needed Mikole Hardman to be in this first round mock it up, mock it up for me personally. I wanted to say that that's my guy going in with Andy Reid yeah. and all that good stuff. But I, I got no problem. I can if see you a team like that maybe reaching for a Singletary, but it's a hard reach for me at that point. Yeah, and they're probably going to wait a year anyway. If you're if you're not going to have a running back two to plug in anyway i don't mind plugging in daryl henderson is if i don't have a, a two last year we had me, me and you had a team where we didn't have Le'Veon bell and we didn't have a running back two we plugged in peyton barber sometimes we were screwed i would have loved to have daryl henderson on the rams for maybe his six to eight touches a game maybe more mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens and that's i don't mind if, i like this pick i like this pick where you're at but if you got Gurley, this is a no-brainer and if you don't have Gurley, it can still be a no-brainer yeah yeah definitely Definitely can't disagree with the pick for Gurley. And if you wanted to take him because you need a running back and there's no running backs, I mean, they took him in as the third overall running back in this draft. They took him three spots ahead of David Montgomery. And 
four spot, and then Singletary went right off that after that. Yeah. So it was Josh Jacobs, well, Miles Sanders, and Daryl Henderson. I don't think they necessarily needed a David Montgomery. The the Henderson was a better fit for what they needed and, and are looking for moving Agreed. forward. Agreed. Yeah. That breakaway speed makes the defense have to be stressed about with the, you know when he's on the field and if you when you put him on the field with Gurley, now you got to look over there. Just put you him on the field with some good space and let Cooks, him do what he Brandon does. Brandon Cook's going to beat you. Right. Cooper Cup is tough. If When he comes back, hopefully he comes back 100% from his knee, and then Bobby Woods is completely still under rated and that offense is going to be tough i don't know if he's underrated he's properly rated right now for sure well, who robert woods yeah well, well the fans- cat's out of the bag all, all of our off-season work last year of saying <laughs> get all the bobby woods you can and the year before yeah the cats I mean, right out of the bag <laughs> we were telling you to pick up bobby woods when he had a, a 186 adp and yeah. we were like maybe you should pick up bobby woods we tried we and tried we told you and there you go um but now yeah. he's his fourth round pick uh, Henderson, I mean, although he, we just got him in the early six of a startup, Henderson, yeah. I don't know if His I was best ball, doesn't matter. Super sold on him, but I didn't go back and listen to our breakdown. That was a long time ago. I think that the Super Bowl was going on when we broke down Daryl Henderson, and I was thinking maybe his his sick yards per carry. 8.2 was a little bit of a fugazi, and, and he had 5.6 yards after contact. But I mean, going back and rewatching him, I think he is a little tougher than I gave him credit for. And he's thick up, and the ball security is good. And he had 63 catches over a three year career. You got to like that. And he's in a good offense. So there's question marks about Todd Gurley. And, and at the very least, you could sell him to the Todd Gurley owner, I think. So, and, and maybe he has some standalone value. You can't disagree. So I think, I think that'll wrap up today's show. Finished up this first round. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Really appreciate the listen. Be sure to rate and review the podcast or however you're listening. It'll yeah. Excellent day. If you're on iTunes, hit that little five stars for us. That'd be great. If you're on YouTube, definitely hit subscribe or like or comment in the section below. We try to hit you back with something. If we, we want to hear from you, whether it's positive or negative, whatever, just hit us up. Uh, find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, uh, at Jay Wayne's World, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co. Anything else? So head over to Patreon. We're about to go do another show uh, for your pleasure. Answer some questions off the community page. It's popping off. Everybody's got drafts going on. We're trying to help everybody with their picks. Talk and about a little FFPC rookie drafts over the weekend. And uh, we just started best ball startup. Might speak a little bit about that. So head on over there. Before we go, I'm glad that we got the time that we put in on A.J. Brown at 112. Because as say you're a dominant dynasty team and you're picking in the back half of your first round, a team a, you don't normally get a, a, a wide receiver like as him. good as A.J. Brown right. in the back of the first round. But due to landing spot, you're going to get that value whether you're, you know, 2-1, two, 2-2, two, 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 three. Whether you're a bad team and you're at the top and you yeah. can get A.J. Brown early. and But, you know, so that's, that's the other some, part of 212 is like if you earned it, 112, like, it's, 112, like that's it. A.J. Brown should be a good pick for you again. I you know you're wait. getting good exactly. value because you should already have a decent team. Yeah, exactly. And you can wait it out. And, and it if you're dynasty. a bad team and you got the one, two, but you got the two, two, maybe, you know, A.J. Brown might get to you again. Sure. Um, he's I've seen I've seen a lot of good teams in the ffpc this year a lot of teams the way the trades work in those leagues usually the teams have nothing to do with how they finish the drafts are all over the place and i saw a lot of good teams with therefore normally good owners taking aj brown at the end of the first round and i was quite jealous of the picks because kind of sucks right now but it'll be i think it'll pay out to be really good good player i'm glad you got him in there even though he wasn't i wanted to had to i almost did when i was going to paris but i was like i'll squeeze him in at 112 he earned it yeah, I mean, A.J. Brown's been in the conversation for me in all these picks in the second half yeah. of this first round. Just couldn't pull the trigger just quite yet, but he's coming up soon. Uh, we'll be getting to the rest of this mock it up before you know it. Uh, we'll be yeah. back next week with round two. two. Yeah, if A.J. Brown would have went to the Patriots at the end of the first round, he'd be in that top four. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Well, we'll but see instead, you next time. it was yeah. actually uh, one last, well played, one sir. Last plug. Well played. You're a smedrick. All right. Are. Thanks for listening, Smedric. everybody. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties, Married to the Game. <laughs>